Hi there. Welcome to Asina's Developer Channel. I am Mike Horton, CTO of Asina, and your host. In today's video, we will talk about how to measure dynamic tilt angle on a moving vehicle with an IMU or inertial measurement unit. Dynamic tilt can also sometimes be called dynamic orientation, attitude, or inclination. So I will use these terms interchangeably in this video. Now why would you want to know the dynamic tilt angle on a vehicle? Well, let's start with a classic example of a plane in the clouds. In this case, a pilot cannot see the ground, nor can he or she trust their instincts because they will feel a false gravity when the aircraft is turning. So this means they need a dynamic tilt sensor, which as an aircraft instrument is actually called a vertical gyro or the artificial horizon. Now, what about a car? Why would Ken and Barbie need dynamic tilt measurement in their car? Well, traditionally, they might not have needed it. But now, with cars getting smarter and the move to autonomous navigation technology in vehicles, there is a real need for accurate dynamic orientation data in the car. In this video, we're going to break this measurement down real simple and show you how it works, explain the math, and show you how to build your own accurate dynamic tilt sensor using the OpenIMU platform from Asina. So let's start with a basic case, the case of a static tilt sensor. The most basic static tilt sensor we are all familiar with is the carpenter's level. We use these to build buildings and hang pictures, items that are generally speaking not moving. Now what is the bubble in the liquid here actually doing? It's actually measuring acceleration. And what acceleration are you measuring when you hang up the picture? You're actually measuring the acceleration due to gravity. Great, we got it. So we can use the three axis accelerometer that's inside the IMU and use that to measure the tilt. And in fact, we have that math here and we have a nice open source application that demonstrates it and runs on open IMU hardware. This algorithm is called the static leveler algorithm and it implements the math. Like all OpenIMU applications, you can compile and download this code directly onto an Asina OpenIMU, simply using our Asina Visual Studio Code extension found in the Microsoft Extension Marketplace for Visual Studio Code. So we've set this up, and we can see the tilt response of Barbie's car live. Now we can do the same experiment with a simple glass of milk. Why is this milk blue, by the way? Well, what we can see with this blue milk is that it responds to tilt angle, just like the carpenter's level. But not only does that milk respond to the tilt angle, it responds vigorously to linear acceleration. And that's the problem with an accelerometer. We can see this the same thing on Barbie's car. We can see that if we roll Barbie's car back and forth, we can see that the pitch angle, which should be zero, carpenter's level is showing it as flat, we can see it actually respond vigorously. So what do we do about this problem? We need to use the IMU's other three sensors, the angular rate sensors, that are, which are commonly also called gyros. An angular rate gyro responds to a rotational rate, and that rotation rate can be integrated to an angle. And you can see that in the simulated gyro signal above, um, if, I, if I integrate that red curve, I get a 90 degree change to the left, and then a second 90 degree turn to the right. The big bonus here is that a gyro does not respond to linear acceleration. It only responds to angular change. But <clears throat> unfortunately, it's not as easy as just using a gyro, because a gyro has two big problems for measuring dynamic tilt. Those problems are, one, it's a relative measurement. It has no absolute reference like a tilt or inclination sensor does. And two, integrating angular rate to angle will slowly drift off, causing the attitude error to grow. So we really need a solution that combines both acceleration and gyro measurement. And that is why a full six-axis IMU is typically at the core of dynamic tilt or attitude measurement. Here's a block diagram of what a typical IMU-based solution looks like hardware-wise. And this is how Asina's open IMU is also configured. Now, as compared to the static leveler algorithm, which we just talked about, we do need to upgrade the math to blend both the gyro-based solution and the accelerometer-based solution into one clean output. This is best done with an extended Kalman filter. And the two equations here summarize the key math needed by the Kalman filter to actually measure dynamic tilt accurately. 
The math is a little more complex, but the good news is the OpenIMU platform also provides a turnkey open source algorithm application that implements this function. This is known as the VG AHARS application, and it's found here in the same Visual Studio Code extension. This app can also be compiled and loaded onto your OpenIMU. Now, I've done that, and we can now see Ken and Barbie go for a drive, and as we see them drive up and down the road, we see that it does not respond to linear acceleration, but at the same time, we see it does respond to tilt. And the good news is here that using the combination of the sensors, it will not drift off over time. So in summary, we have implemented an accurate dynamic tilt measurement. To do that, we needed four things. The first is an IMU. The second is an algorithm that combines both the acceleration and the angular rate measurement. The third thing is an extended Kalman filter, because this is the best way to, to smoothly use both the acceleration sensor and the angular rate measurement at the same time and provide uh, absolute reference and drift free. And the fourth point is that all of this code is available in OpenIMU and more information is available on Asina's website. So thank you for listening and I hope you have enjoyed this video.